education is a leading issue for many Latino voters headed into the midterms, including my next guest. She immigrated from Chile. She was a registered Democrat, worked for a teacher's union in Nevada, and says she felt trapped in a failing public school system. That drove her to fight for issues not in line with her former political party. Valeria Gurr. External Director for the American Federation for Children joins me now. Valeria, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. So tell us, what changed for you? Uh, I think a lot of things uh, changed for me. Um, first of all, coming to this country and, and seeing, you know, the land of opportunity and essentially realizing that my community, the Hispanic community, is often left behind and not having access to quality education is a false promise to the American dream. I saw a lot of, you know, it, I work, you know, as you mentioned, for the teachers union, uh, thinking that we can change the state of education and fix um, the quality of the education that was given to, not just to the students, but also, you know, the quality condition for the teachers. And after spending two years working for them, I just realized that things weren't changing um, and things were remaining the same. So and I immigrated to this country because I wanted to do better. I wanted to be better. And I felt trapped, like you mentioned before, in the public education system. And I saw that my community is often left behind under the same circumstances. Uh, Hispanic kids and African-American kids go behind every single year, all the testing shows that they're behind their white counterpeers. And I realized that it was a lot of promises have been made to my community and essentially none of these promises have been kept. Yeah, so according to recent polls, uh, the Democrat Party is losing Latino support as more realize that their values better align with Republican priorities. It sounds like you fall into that group, but the majority of Latinos still support Democrats. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that polling have shown that 13 percent of, you know, Latinos are coming to the Republican Party. And, and I think that you have the answer, like Latinos support, want to have a strong economy. We come to this country to do better and we work hard. And that promise, you know, when you have this, you know, level of inflation is hard, but also our community wants better education. Our grandmothers always tell us, you know, without a quality education, you do not have access to your American dream or you just simply don't have access to anything. And education, we are seeing the, the new neighbor reports, are, is worse than ever. It was already bad, but now it's worse than ever. And it's all about politics. It's not about kids. A lot of promises, again, a lot of promises have been made to my community that they're going to fix things because the vulnerable communities need more help. And only 19% are entering to college. And, and it's only going to get worse. So Latinos want to sit at the table. And we know that we need two things for that. We need a quality education. We need a school choice. We need access to options. And they're not given to us. Essentially, if, if your reports like the pandemic caused a lot of disruption in the classrooms, it's going gonna, it's gonna to only open it and create it. Uh, larger gaps of learning, and I, I think that essentially with with families uh, knowing this, I think we're tired of waiting. Like we, we keep telling, we're going to fix it, we're going to fix things, we're going to fix the state of education, but it never gets fixed. Yeah, we're tired of waiting. Families don't have time. Yeah. I, we only get one chance. Yeah, it's getting worse because student test scores, no doubt, they were falling before the pandemic. But yesterday, uh, the nation's report card came out. It is really bad post lockdowns. Drops in education never, ever seen before. Mass scores saw the largest decline in history. Reading scores dropped to 1992 levels. How did we fail our children so badly? So six points. Six points essentially mean that, that kids that want to access to technical careers, or they want to have access to engineer careers or even medical, like you need math scores to be able to access to all these different options. Uh, we really felt that by not listening to the needs of the students and the parents, parents know what is best for their children. But unfortunately, in this country, if you don't, you're not born in the right zip code, you don't have access to quality education. And the only state that has listened to families is Arizona, where they have now a universal ESA, and Florida, where families essentially have access to wide, a wide range of options. 
But if you come to a state like Nevada or California, there are no options for them. There is essentially zero. In the state that I live in, uh, families uh, we're like are, are the bottom of education and often the kids that have to stay in large classroom settings are Hispanic and African-American communities. Mm -hmm. So uh, how we fix this, we give the power back to the parents. Uh, it, essentially what we're saying is the parents don't know. And, the, and if you are if you are poor or you were not born in the right zip code, you have no access to anything else. So what we're saying, essentially, only the wealthy and well-connected should have access to quality education, and that's just not right. Yeah. So going back to your question of, you asked me why you think more Latinos are leaving the Democrat Party, I think we're tired of broken promises over and over, broken promises that things are going to get better for us, and they don't get better. So if you look at, if you look at like our, our, our energy of needs, we need... Like the first things that we need is to be able to provide for our families. And the second one is to have a fair chance to succeed. And I don't think none of those things are covered right now. Yeah. And having federal funds follow the student uh, school choice, it seems like the logical step for states like Nevada and California. Valeria Gurr, American Federation for Children, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.